And we're going to say, okay, this is for the new customer, which is music stuff. So we're going to say this is for mu or new music stuff. And then the pop-up is saying, hey, we got some billable items. I'm paraphrasing. I'm going to say, okay. And then it's not time. It's not expenses. It's not mileage. It's items. So we're going to go to the items, check off the item and say, okay. And it pulls in that information. So now we've got, I'm going to say this is on the 24th of 2023 invoice populates automatically let's set the terms at net 30 which is just what we've been doing customarily so we expect to receive the uh the stuff in 30 days or get paid i mean in 30 days so we've got a squire 20 squire guitars that we are charging for uh 244 each and then the total it's a taxable item so now we just got the standard invoice. So what's going to what's going to happen when we record this? Still fairly complex transaction because invoices kind of are. It's going to be an invoice. Accounts receivable is going to be going up. I'm going to uncheck this by the full amount, including the sales tax of the 5124. The other side is going to go to revenue driven to the account by the item, but not including the sales tax for the 40880. And then the sales tax is going to go into a payable account, a liability account. Then we're going to have the uh, inventory go down by an amount not on the invoice, but driven by the item and cost of goods sold is going to go up. The net effect on the income statement is an increase to the revenue minus the cost of goods sold. The sub ledger will also be account affected for the invoice or accounts receivable. Uh, sorting that by customer, new music stuff being the one that owes us the money, and inventory sub ledgers will also be accounted for, which will track the units of inventory which are now going down for the 20 Squire guitars.